Okay, so for those of you who have the older calculators, um, and again, you'll know you have the older calculator because it doesn't have the chi-square goodness of fit test. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this problem in another way. Um, so we're going to go to stat and edit. And we're going to put in the information. So since these are percentages, this is the um, distribution that they're looking at. We need to have that in there. So, And remember, they're percentages, so 31.3 divided by 100. 6.1 divided by 100, 2.5 divided by 100, 10.1 divided by 100. So we want to make sure that these are in decimal format. Okay, so that's what we're putting in L1. In L2, we are going to multiply that by how many people uh, we were surveyed, so our N. So In L2, we're going to go up to the top. We're going to say that this is second list one times 400. And that puts in our expected values. So that's what where these numbers came from. Okay. And as long as um, our values are bigger than five for our expected values, we can do a chi-square test. All right, so it doesn't matter what our um, observed values are, it matters what our expected values are. So in L3, I'm going to put our observed values. Okay. So now I have these two. What I need to do is um, there's... Actually, let me... Okay, so to calculate the chi-squared uh, value, we need to do this, which is take the observed value, subtract off the expected values, square that answer, and then divide by the expected values, and then take all of those values and then sum them up. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here is we're going to subtract these. So in L4, I'm going to say that this is L3 minus L2, my observed values minus my expected values. And I'm going to square them. So parentheses, L3 minus L2 close parentheses, squared. The reason we square them is it gets rid of the negatives. Okay, because obviously 3 minus 10 is negative 7. And we don't want that, especially since we're going to add them up. Now in L5, I'm going to take my values in L4, and I'm going to divide by my expected values, which were in L2. This gives me this piece right here. Okay, now I have to take those numbers and add them up. So to do that, I have my column here. I'm going to quit my statistics. I'm going to go to um, list, which is above statistics, second stat. And I'm going to go over to math. And now notice I have a thing called sum, and I'm going to sum up my values that are in L5. That gives me my test statistic. Okay, so I've calculated my expected frequencies. The null and alternatives are always the same. So the null hypothesis is that the distribution fits my observed values and it's right. The alternative is that it does not fit and therefore it is probably mistaken. The degrees of freedom are one fewer than how many items I have. So I have four groups. Four minus one is three. And this here is how uh, we 
put out the distribution chi squared with the degrees of freedom of 3. What is our test statistic? Right here, we just calculated that. So now we have to find the p-value. So to get that, we have to go to distributions. And we're going to go down to chi-squared CDF. And our lower value is this test statistic, 16.57. Our upper value is infinity, 1 e to the 99th. I know we haven't done this in a long time. And degrees of freedom are free. 3, not free. <laughs> all right. So. Our lower value is our test statistic, and it's going to go all the way up to positive infinity. Our degrees of freedom, and we go to paste, and then enter, and we get our value. Now, notice this is 8.6, okay, e to the negative 4. Because this is bigger than 1, we have to move our decimal places. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's how we get this value here of 0.0. .0 Zero, zero, 009 because 86 rounds up to 9. And that's the probability of getting this test statistic if the null hypothesis was true. For the graph, I'm going to show you, don't worry about graphing it. You're always going to have, it's always going to be a greater than, so it's always going to be the p value is here and we're shading to that side no matter where our p-value is. It's always on the greater than side because we went from 1657 to infinity, so that's what we're shading in. So that's why we chose that one. Our alpha, was, point, was 5 percent, so alpha is 0.05. And what are we going to do with that? Well, because our alpha is bigger than our p-value, we reject. So, therefore, we decide to reject the null hypothesis. And what does that mean? It means that there's enough evidence to conclude that this distribution is probably incorrect. And that's how you do a goodness of fit test for the TI-83, TI-84, TI-84 Plus, and all the older Texas Instruments calculators that don't have the goodness of fit test built in.